Hello, everybody. It's me, Taisha, founder of Something for the People Ministry. And I am here today to talk about the narcissist slash Jezebel. And um, I know we've been waiting for this one. And I'm going to really let the Holy Spirit take over. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures that I have. And then we're going to get into it with this character, I would like to say. <laughs> um, my first scripture. Oh, before I get started, let me pray. Father God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I need you. I love you. I thank you. I praise you. Lord, I ask that you come through. This is a major message. We need a major revelation from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, y'all. So I already, I've been setting up my scripture for this. And I think I'm going to go ahead and be done for the day after this one. Um, First King chapter 21, verse 23. Okay. End of Jezebel. And of Jezebel also spoke, okay, and of Jezebel also spoke the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jer of Jerizel. Jerizel. Okay. Revelation 2, verse 20. Uh, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest thy woman Jezebel, which calleth herself called herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Okay. Um, Matthew chapter 7 verse 16. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thrustles? Titus chapter 1 verse 16. They claim to know God but by their actions, they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. For they cannot rest until they do evil. They are robbed of, of sleep till they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is is like the morning sun shining ever brighter to the full light of day. First uh, Peter chapter five verses five through six. In the same way, you who are younger submit yourself to your elders. All of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourself. Therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Romans chapter 16, verse 17 through 19. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve, um, for they, for they, that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Uh, I had so many Galatians chapter 5 verse 19, 19 through 21. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and, and the like. Orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 7. You are to destroy the house of Ahab, your master. And I will avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets, and the blood of all the Lord's servants shed by Jezebel. And that is it. And he also got me stuff to wrote down. And then after he gave me gave me got me something. He gave me things to write down that I have as well. So I've been really preparing for this message and I can't believe I'm actually doing it. But here I am. And I had to read the scriptures, you guys, thoroughly, and I'm gonna have them in the description because the, the scriptures themselves, if you notice, they define the characteristics of a narcissist. 
So it lets you know that that's them. And if they have those characteristics, they don't believe in Christ. You know, they may say it, they may proclaim it to blend in, you know, with other people because of the false self wanting to be accepted, but they really do not believe in Christ. Um, believe in God at all. They want to be God. Okay, it says the narcissist, proud. They do not really believe in the heart, in their hearts of God. They're false prophets. They think that they are gods. Uh, they're unbalanced. They're jealous spirited, envious. Uh, compulsive liars. They start fights, then point their fingers at the other person. They find a way to twist the Bible to suit them. And their their let's see their deeds. Okay, uh -huh. their needs. Hold on, I don't know what to say. It's my cursive. Their needs. They are pure Jezebel. Okay, okay. They are pure. They are pure Jezebel spirits in flesh. So in flesh, they have uh, they have the Jezebel spirit. Uh, okay. Um, just pray for them. This is God's direction. He said, just pray for them and keep your distance. Do not argue with them. Let them think that let them think they are always winning. Pray for them because they are going to need it. They just they must repent for every wicked thing they have spoken or done. So God is pretty much letting us know these are their characteristics. You know, they may portray, you know, if, you're, if you've dealt with a narcissist, they may portray to love God, all about Jesus, be a Christian, but they do not act in that way with the way that they do things. Um, They start fights, and then once they start fights, they don't say, hey, I was wrong. They point the finger, and they make you be wrong. They make you be the one that are the wrong one. They turn people against you, which is causing uh, separation, division. Those are not godly characteristics. Those are characteristics of Jezebel. So when you think about a narcissist, think about the Jezebel and the Jezebel spirit. And we know the people with those spirit, they, their days are numbered. And there's some, it was, you know what, y'all really, I really, I really feel sorry for them. You know, when you come to think about it, I really feel sorry for them that they would have to just go to that extreme. And I pray in Jesus' name that each one of them just submit to the real living God. Because who wants, like with Jezebel, she, they pushed her up, or up the, they pushed her down some kind of way. Or she fell down, she fell down off the top of something. And bam, scattered in the ground where the dogs is licking her blood. Like, that's horrible, you know? And, um, uh, you know, that's one thing about the love when you have the genuine, genuine heart and love. Even though they are wrong and sick people, I don't want that for them. I would love for each and every one of them to turn from their wicked and just do good and just repent. And even though I know that in their minds, they might feel like they don't have to repent because they feel like they ain't did nothing wrong. A lot of them feel like that they are the victim. And that they're being made out to be this horrible person. And I don't know if they really realize what they do in their minds. I don't know. But it's a sad thing to see and to witness a person to, you know, be tormented mentally like that. And I don't know what happened with them. But they say a lot of it comes from childhood where they may have been abused um, by caregivers or whatever. <laughs> but, I, <clears throat> but I still feel like <clears throat> when you come over to Christ, you know, and you had the Holy Spirit within you, you shouldn't be acting like that anymore. You know, it's times out for that. You should put away those, that old man and the new man, and put on the new man. That's what the Bible say, right? So that's just, that's a little bit absurd to me. But God would like for us to do is, when he said, let them think that they're winning, that's using wisdom. Because we know that you cannot argue with a narcissist, a.k.a. the Jezebel spirit, because they want to be in control. And they want to know everything, and they want to feel like it's it's them. You know, that nobody else knows nothing other than them. And if they don't, you know, whatever they say is just right. And to keep you from going into the left field, to keep your mind where it needs to be and focus on God, just let them feel like they want. Even though you know that they lie, you know that they are manipulating, you know that they are using witchcraft as a form of manipulation. You know, you have to feel sorry for them and you have to still love on them and really pray that they have true repentance in their heart and they turn to Jesus our Lord and Savior, for real, because I don't want anybody to lose their salvation. I don't want anybody. When I y'all know why I make this video, because I found out that God put it in me the urgency to preach the gospel for heaven or hell, for the souls. You know, the soul that the kingdom was at, at stake. 
at hand or at stake, whatever word the Bible uses. But and I didn't, I don't, I don't want, I, I don't want people to go to hell because they don't know things that they could have done to change or to be better to get into heaven. Like I don't want that. You know, it just, you know, it, it, my expression is how I really feel. Like I really don't want that for anybody. I want all of us to go to heaven and be happy and be with God and you know, and, you know, and just. You know, I just don't want that. So the thought of knowing that there's actually people that are gonna that are really gonna take this thing and, and be put to death and go to hell, it, it, you know, and torment it, you know, by demons, that really that does something to me. I don't want that for anybody. That seems like a horrible death. So I just say that what we God wants us to do is just be wise. He wants us to keep our distance from these people, you know, so we won't lose our minds trying to fight with a demonic force, you know what I'm saying? It's just driven by evil. And um, in the scriptures, read these scriptures because as you notice that each one of the scriptures, scripture is a def it defines the characteristics of a narcissist. So God has given us a layout on when you see a person that's acting like this, they don't, they're not, they're, they don't have me within them, they don't have my spirit within them. You know, they're, they're just, they're, they're, so that's, that's not a person that you would want to entertain. You know, if they say something, they don't feel like they're winning. They don't feel like whatever that they're doing, they're doing the right thing. And God would deal with those people. It's not for us to deal with them and take them in. Because I'm telling y'all, it's like fighting a, a losing battle. You'll never really win. The only person that will win is God. And you want them to just stop it. Because God have mercy on their souls, really. Matter of fact, let's pray for them and then we're going to go. Because I got to pray for them because it's too many of them. It's too many of them. Father God in heaven, Lord, this is a special prayer. And this week, let's come in alignment with this, you guys. Because somebody on here, y'all have a narcissist in your family. You have a narcissist uh, pastor. You have um, somebody, a, a, a relative, a close friend, a co-worker, somebody has these characteristics and you have to deal with them. And this should give you a revelation to just kind of try to keep your distance. And when you, got, when you do got to be around, let them feel like they're winning. Let them feel like they got it going on. Believe in the false self that they believe in. That's the best thing. Just play along. Now, the world might tell you to do this and do that, gray rock them, this and that. God said, let them feel like they're winning. And it's not for them. It's for your sanity. Remember, we're not renewing of your mind now. So don't be putting in no comments that we got to deal with the narcissist. No, this is godly counsel that I'm giving you. This is what God is asking for us to do. He said, let them think that they win and let them think they got it going on, that whatever they say is right. And that's to keep you sane. Because <laughs> he's going to deal with them. You know, we know right from wrong. So, Father God in heaven, I come here with all my sisters and my brothers, Lord. Lord, we're here to talk about this Jezebel spirit, this narcissist that has taken over the world with their actions and their wickedness and their deeds, Lord. Lord, we ask that each one of them, Father God, that even the ones that hear this video at the sound of my voice, Father God, let that spirit, just let that spirit um come out of them. Matter of fact, right now, I rebuke. In the name of Jesus, the Jezebel spirit right now, Father God, out of anybody that reads this, that, that, that uh, follows along with this, anybody that hears me, Father God, at the sound of my voice, Father God, that you would bring in your Holy Spirit and you would give them the Holy Ghost, Father God, that they will no longer do evil. They will no longer do wicked, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I just rebuke that Jezebel spirit, Father God, me and all my sisters, Lord, because they don't need to be in them, Lord. We want them to have salvation. We want them to have the free gift of salvation and go to heaven, Lord, not to go to hell. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, I just give it to you. I thank you. I love you. I need you. I praise your holy name. Stay head over my life in the name of Jesus, Father God. Peace be unto you, all of my viewers. Peace be unto me. Thank you, Lord. Some people are going to be saved today. Some people are going to come to you, Father God. The angels are going to sing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for having heaven here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. It is finished. Now I felt the need to pray because, you know, some people that's going to come into this video, they are narcissists and they want to be free. They don't want to be like that. They don't want to be like that. So we have to just pray for them, Father God, in Jesus' name, y'all. And the spirit is all over me. So this is major, you know, it's very major. But right now, for, oh, thank you, Jesus. I feel the anointing. I feel your power, Lord. Thank you, Lord. They are being released. God said, there are some people right now, they're going to be released from this. They're going to be walking and filled with the Holy Spirit. You have been baptized in the spirit of God. You have been baptized. You have received Jesus, Father God. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. I thank you. I praise you. I worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. When I start rocking back and forth, it just hit me and it's tingling through my body. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. This was passionate to the Father. This was passionate. I knew it was a message I had to do, but I didn't know. Woo! I didn't know. So I love you guys. Thank you all so much. Um, we got to, yes, just stand on the word. Remember, you got to read this to this over and over again. Don't deal with them like the world tell you to deal with them. The world say, grave rock them. You know, God say you keep your distance. If you can keep your distance from one, keep your distance. But if you are around one, don't treat them evil or be mean to them. Love on them. Love on them. Let them think if they want something and they throwing out this stuff to hint at you that they want something, give them what they want. Because God got a, a time for them. And um, it ain't if they don't switch over and, and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, they're going to be just like Jezebel. And I hate that. I don't even like to repeat that. But all right now. Bye-bye.